Hello and welcome to Space Foundation's Space Technology Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Instead of gathering in person at the annual Space Symposium, the world's premier event for bringing together leaders to discuss, address, and plan for future achievements in space, we gather today virtually. But as Sir Richard Branson once said, every success story is a tale of constant adaption, revision, and change. And this year has been a year of adapting for all of us. Over the last six decades, as we have pushed farther into outer space, we have developed tools and techniques to travel, survive, and prosper. Space exploration has led us to develop new technologies and re-engineer existing ones to meet the challenges and rigors of space. Computers, healthcare, and communications. They were all available before we launched into space, but the urgent and unique demands of space spurred us to make each of them better, stronger, more efficient, and safer. For more than 30 years, Space Foundation has honored the leaders and visionaries who have transformed and adapted technologies originally developed for space into products and services that improve the quality of life on Earth. With dozens of technologies and hundreds of organizations and individuals inducted into the Space Technology Hall of Fame over the years, the talent it celebrates is profound. Our class of 2020 inductees are no strangers to transforming and adapting to achieve success. Each of them has taken an existing space technology and adapted it to address everyday needs on Earth and serves us on our best days as well as our most challenging. In its more than three decades of service, the Space Technology Hall of Fame has honored hundreds of individuals and organizations, every one of them an example of the dedication and hard work that brings space technology's benefits to life on Earth. What the Hall of Fame does is it brings out these hidden gems of technology that arose from the space program and now have done so much in our lives. The Space Technology Hall of Fame is an opportunity to highlight some of those technologies that we have all grown to become accustomed to in our everyday lives that were started from the space industry. Each year, dozens of technologies are nominated for potential induction into the Space Technology Hall of Fame. A vital part of the induction process is our group of notable judges. Every year, the Space Foundation assembles distinguished individuals from various professions to review the eligible applications and select the next round of inductees. Astronauts, engineers, Playwrights, scientists, journalists, entrepreneurs, and more have all been a part of the judging process. I had the opportunity of doing uh, judging this year, and uh, this year we had quite a few different applications that came in for uh, induction into the Hall of Fame. The nice people at the foundation sent me a note asking me if I'd be interested, and I said, sure, absolutely. And I got to become the dumbest judge in the Space Technology Hall of Fame. Everybody there has a really impressive resume of accomplishments and education. I am a liberal arts major from Washington State University. The three inductees in 2020 share more than their space lineage. Telecommunications, enabled by high-powered Earth stations and satellites. Teleconferencing, powered by audio conference bridge technology. And telemedicine, developed for Gemini missions. All three are playing a vital role today in how the world is responding to recent challenges. If you look at the technologies that were selected for this round, these are all things that are amazing in light of what's happened this year. Each of the three inducted technologies were absolutely remarkable, um, not only in their time, but what they have done and what they have done for the community at large. I look at it as an everyman. And when you realize how some of these technologies, especially if you look at things like GPS, space is in the background of almost everything we do. Space Foundation is proud to induct three new technologies into the Space Technology Hall of Fame. First up, the traveling wave tube amplifier. When you look at how wave tubes impact the internet, incredible. I had the fortunate opportunity to work with Tweedas in my past experience and 
uh, is a remarkable technology that makes a lot of the communication that we use daily possible. So everything from the TV broadcast you, you receive on a daily basis to cell phone communications is typically done through traveling wave tube amplifiers. The technology we have today wouldn't be possible without it. Behold the Tweeta, the traveling wave tube amplifier. It's a linear vacuum tube that focuses an electron beam through a coiled wire helix or waveguide and amplifies RF signals fed through it with high power, wide bandwidth, and low noise. Traveling wave tubes found early use in radar, long distance microwave, and TV broadcast systems, but it was communication satellites that allowed the low weight, power efficient Tweeta to really shine. Sturdy and long lived, Tweetas became indispensable for space programs. NASA Glenn Research Center and L3 Electron Devices first teamed up in the 1960s to develop Tweetas that flew on early spacecraft. NASA Glenn and L3 have continued to work together on this technology, refining and improving performance. Every NASA spacecraft launched since 1972 has had a Tweeta on board. In fact, the three Tweetas on board Voyager 1 still communicate with Earth from outside the solar system. Today, L3 Electron Devices applies precision engineering and manufacturing to make the latest generation of space-certified millimeter wave tweetas, greatly enhancing voice and data services, broadband internet, video distribution, and evolving cellular networks. Tweetas, standard equipment on all communication satellites that impact our lives every day. Thank you for inducting me into the Space Technology Hall of Fame. I am honored to have received this prestigious award. The Space Traveling Wave Tube Amplifier has flown on numerous NASA missions and commercial satellites. I would like to express my sincere thanks to all the people who made this happen. Additionally, I would like to thank L3 Harris, Electron Devices, Torrance, California, for their multi-decade collaboration. Furthermore, I would like to thank our center NASA Glenn and the agency for their support. I'd like to thank the Space Foundation for the opportunity of being inducted into the Technology Hall of Fame. Like all things of great value, they almost always take a team and this has been no exception. I'd like to thank Dr. Rainey Simons from NASA Glenn for his leadership in allowing this experiment to take place. These are nonlinear systems and by operating them with the nonlinear process, it allows them to operate at much higher efficiency and have more efficient communication systems. I would also like to thank Mr. Bill Menninger from L3 Harris EDD for his work in leading the team that developed the Traveling Wave Tube Amplifier. I would also like to thank Mr. Bill McIntyre and June Sun from L3 Harris Communication Systems West in Salt Lake City for their work in developing the nonlinear algorithms that allowed this to take place. The real value of this is that we can operate communication systems at two to eight times higher efficiency with the nonlinear capability. I really appreciate the opportunity to have led this technical team of very fine professionals and thank you again to the Space Foundation. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dale Forrest. When Dr. Henry Cosmo invited me to a job interview, I did not even know traveling wave tubes existed, but I spent most of my career working on them. This honor represents the work of many people over many years at both Glenn Research Center and L3 Harris Electron Devices. While many of them have retired and some have even passed on, many continue to work on this project and I want to acknowledge all of their efforts. Finally, let me say that we greatly appreciate this honor and thank the Space Technology Hall of Fame. On behalf of L3 Harris and the Electron Devices Division, thank you, Admiral and Space Foundation, for this honor. We are very proud to receive this award and to have been the sole U.S. provider of space traveling wave tube amplifiers since the inception of space communications. In 1962, Telstar 1, very first U.S. communications satellite launched into orbit. It weighed 77 kilograms, it had 14 watts of solar power, and it utilized a 3-watt C-band traveling wave tube amplifier for transatlantic experimental communications. Today, satellites are technological marvels. They weigh thousands of kilograms and provide thousands of watts of power. Our space traveling wave tube amplifier 
has evolved along with them and for 58 years has provided unbeatable art performance and reliability, as evidenced by the over 10,000 traveling wave tube amplifiers in orbit today, with an accumulated operating time of over 1 billion hours. These devices for 50 years have truly connected the globe with essential communication services. So thank you for believing, along with all of us at L3 Harris, that our technology is an appropriate choice for this award. Thank you to Rainey Simons, Kara Barbrick, Deborah Good, and Scott Walker for helping us with our application process. And thank you again for this prestigious award. Conference calling. Never used to do it, now I'm on a conference call I don't know how many times a day. Teleconferencing now, um, more than ever, is, is vital to everything we do. It started off as a space application so that we could talk to folks in remote locations and then also bring expertise from all over the world. That need has helped us get through this time when we can't be close together and get that face-to-face -face that we used to have. Cables, patch panels, plugs, connectors, more cables, all standard equipment for voice communication in the 20th century. This technology was the backbone of NASA's global communications network into the 1980s. It was manually intensive with a limited scope. In 1987, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center was searching for a better way, and a small contract services technology provider called Compunetics responded to a request for a digital upgrade to the NASA system. Dr. Giorgio Coralupi, founder of Compunetics, had the solution, and his patented non-blocking switching system beat the offers from AT&T and other major telecom providers. Compunetics and NASA developed new digital audio bridge systems that enabled software-based switching and grouping of calls from multiple destinations around the world. By 1992, the new digital 4000 port system had been installed and was used system-wide at NASA. The digital audio system developed for NASA and patented by Compunetics became the basis for a new commercial teleconferencing product in the newly deregulated telecom market. Today, that commercial product is used by nearly every audio conference provider. Now, in its fifth generation, the Compunetics audio bridge system is somewhere in the background of almost every teleconference call. It's technology, born from the needs of space exploration, that keeps us all closer and in touch in a changing world. We want to express our gratitude to the Space Foundation for their recognition of our audio conference technology, which was originally developed for NASA 30 years ago. This technology became the foundation and the basis for the products and services Compunetics offers to this day. Today, in every continent, most of the countries have audio, video, and data conferencing facilities produced by Compunetics. It is a great honor and privilege to be inducted into the Space Technology Hall of Fame. Over the past years, Compunetics has been engaged in providing solutions for bold, complex information processing projects. One example was the Mission Voice solution Compunetics developed for the U.S. and Canadian air defenses, part of NORAD. These NORAD facilities monitor and protect the U.S. and Canadian airspaces. Projects like this create very stimulating and innovative work environment for Compunetics. Our guiding philosophy uses intuition persistence, and passion in addressing these challenges in a cooperative effort with our clients. Therefore, on behalf of Dr. Kolupi and all of us at Compunetics, we thank the Foundation for this great honor. Thank you. As the Goddard Center Director, it's an honor to accept the Space Technology Hall of Fame Medallion for our Audio Conference Bridge Technology, or Compunetics. The Pivotal Communication System was invented through a contract at Goddard and can be found behind the scenes, enabling numerous call and meeting lines today. And in a COVID environment, it's particularly useful, very, very uh, enabling technology for what we're facing as a pandemic across the country. Even some web-based video conference calls rely on Compunetics switches to uh, connect audio. The technology improved NASA's communication while helping teams all across the world 
work more effectively together regardless of the location. In the future, we will re continue to rely on innovations just like this one to move our missions forward in the face of global challenges. And I'm proud to see a Goddard-related technology receive this well-deserved recognition. Thanks again. When you look at the ability to remotely monitor patients, what a big role that has played in saving lives just in, in the past six months. We can take expertise in one location and distribute that expertise across the globe. Uh, and really now this technology is, is paving the way for a lot of what we're doing, um, not only in uh, robotic telemedicine in the future, but also in uh, just your everyday doctor's visits are now more and more done by video conference. When Gemini 4 astronaut Ed White stepped out into space in 1965, specialists at NASA Johnson Space Center could monitor his every breath and heartbeat in real time, thanks to engineers James Reeves and Ben Edelson at Space Labs Medical. Working with NASA, Space Labs Medical developed a system with sensors attached to astronauts that recorded body temperature, heart rate, and breath cycles. They also developed a telemetry system that recorded the data and broadcast the data back to Earth. Beautiful, just beautiful. When Neil Armstrong walked on the moon in 1969, he too was wearing Space Lab's health monitors and telemetry. Remote real-time monitoring of vital signs and health was critical to space missions, but Space Labs realized that their system could have broad use here on Earth too. They developed a similar system of real-time health monitoring that could be used by hospitals to track patient health and recovery. Today, Space Labs Healthcare has a whole line of healthcare monitoring and telemetry systems that are in use in hospitals worldwide. Space Labs is also developing health monitoring and telemetry systems for at-home care, allowing patients to have continued health monitoring while recovering at home. Telemedicine systems developed at NASA's direction in the early years of space travel are saving lives today, enabling medical providers to remotely keep track of patients during these challenging healthcare times. I'm proud to accept this award on behalf of everyone at Space Labs, past and present, who continually redefined the limits of what is possible in healthcare. Back in 1958, when two scientists founded Space Labs to join NASA's quest for the moon, distance was a barrier to overcome because distance represented danger. It was medical telemetry that bridged this distance, enabling real-time vital signs monitoring of astronauts 200,000 miles away by a support team right here on Earth. Today, we find ourselves in very different times. The technology we developed to bridge the distance of space now protects caregivers in hospitals throughout the world. You see, with today's challenges of COVID-19 and hospital-acquired infections, distance no longer represents danger. Today, it represents safety. Remote monitoring gets critical data to caregiver teams wherever they are and minimizes unnecessary physical contact. Today, our mission control is a network of caregivers using monitors, PCs, even smartphones, from the nurse down the hall to the cardiac specialists three states away. This might not be possible were it not for the Moonshot Dream and the collective efforts that follow. It is a lesson that continues to inspire all of us at Space Labs, which is why this recognition by the Space Foundation means so much to us. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mark Geyer, the uh, NASA JSC Center Director, and I'm honored to accept this award uh, from the Space Foundation on behalf of our employees in, at JSC in Houston. Uh, really, it's for efforts to commercialize the Apollo 70 cardiac care monitoring system, which was the pioneer of what is commonly known today as medical telemetry. More than 60 years ago, Space Lab Medical helped NASA better understand human reaction to space through a series of bio-instrumentation devices that, for the first time ever, were capable of monitoring orbiting astronauts' physical conditions in real time from Earth. The company went on to further expand its knowledge of monitoring and maintaining health in space and then brought it down to Earth to dramatically change the course of patient monitoring in the field of healthcare. I want to thank the Space Foundation for recognizing our past achievements 
and look forward to celebrating our Artemis innovations in the near future. Thank you. I think these nominees as a whole really demonstrated to me what a big role space plays in our lives. And the ones that were selected are just mind boggling how they impact us every day. It, it's quite remarkable to see some of these unique niche technologies and then realize how big of an application uh, they have within the greater context of society now. Uh, and it all started with the space industry. These are technologies that we recognize that arose from NASA programs that have become such an important part of our life and we couldn't have picked better in light of what's happened this year. Telemedicine, teleconferencing, and telecommunications all are vital to the world's security, commerce, and connectivity, and they are at the core of the three technologies being inducted this year. They stand as prime examples of how space technology improves life for everyone. Congratulations and welcome to the elite group of awardees that have helped all of mankind. Buenos dias, this is Dr. Jose Mori. I would just like to tell all of the inductees for this year's Space Technology Hall of Fame, congratulations. Your technologies and your innovations are changing humanity. You've been able to take technology that was utilized for space exploration and evolve it for terrestrial use for the betterment of all. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing to continue to innovate. My name is Erin McDonald. I'm an astrophysicist and the science consultant for the Star Trek universe. I was also one of the judges this year for the Space Technology Hall of Fame. Now this isn't quite the celebration that we were hoping for, but I definitely want to send my congratulations to all of the inductees. Thank you for your contributions. Thank you for the advancement of technology and the continuing benefit to humanity. Congratulations again. I just want to take this opportunity to congratulate every one of the inductees into the Space Technology Hall of Fame for 2020. I know this hasn't been an easy year for any of us and definitely a challenging time for so many people, both in technology and business. So to all the inductees for 2020, I know it's a tough year. Keep innovating because you are the ones who change the world and make our lives better and easier. Congratulations. I'd like to congratulate them for not only the remarkable accomplishments they did in their time uh, developing this technology, but also, you know, just like to point out the incredible advancements that they've done to society at large. On behalf of the Space Foundation and of the judges, what a privilege it was to look at every one of these entries. We we're really sad that we can't be with these people in person. I, I for one, would probably get a lot smarter if I could spend the night with you folks. but. Uh, one of the most amazing things that this made obvious to me is how many people are working so hard every day to make all of our lives better. Everyone who's involved in this process deserves our thanks. Congratulations again to this year's inductees into the Space Technology Hall of Fame. All of us at Space Foundation are proud to honor you and recognize your efforts to make the rewards of space for everyone. Innovative technologies such as yours offer inspiration and direction to transform the most ambitious of missions into tangible benefits that touch every community and continent. That is something we will always celebrate. Thank you so much for joining us to recognize this year's Space Technology Hall of Fame inductees, and we look forward to seeing you at future Space Foundation events.